You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, ProLeftPod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for March 30th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Cornfield Resistance, where our sponsors are 100% boycott proof. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. We are 100% boycott proof here at Cornfield Resistance. Not one of our sponsors <laughs> has ever been boycotted. Not one. No. Nope. Not one time. Well, ever. you know, they really can't be, Drift Glass. The people at the where the good Lord split you, emergency farewell party supplies. They're good people. They're good people. They can't stop the business. It just no. keeps coming. And, uh, you know, we're going to see more departures, apparently. And so they, are, they have the cakes, like you said, on the big long conveyor belt heading straight to 1600 pennsylvania avenue and giving everybody a cake all the time so well, they're working on some breakthrough technology there they're, they're creating like a, a mobius strip cake which on one side says welcome to the white house and the other side says you're fired and it just whatever bite you take out of it it just tastes like shit no matter what, no matter what that's it that's yeah. it it's just anyway, a shit it, sandwich yeah, but our our sponsors uh, never be- never boycotted and never will uh, because they are imaginary. Yes. Uh, the uh, that I also want to mention. Uh, I want to toot a horn. Uh, take a little executive privilege, executive time, as uh, our president calls it, um, to point out that tomorrow is my thirteenth blog anniversary. Happy blog anniversary, Drift Glass. Are you having a fundraiser at your blog? Hell yeah, I'm having a fundraiser. Good. Oh hell, my god, yes. Uh, today I saw Andrew Sullivan trending on Twitter. Uh, it's like someone, it's like Christmas for you when that yeah, happens. I, I, I saw Glenn Greenwald turning into I saw the best minds of my generation. Oh you know, jeez, or the worst. Glenn Greenwald is now David Brooks. He's become David Brooks. He's now writing about tribalism because <laughs> um, it, because every argument about well, aren't you the same kind of shit stain? Look down your nose. Everyone who disagrees with me is an asshole person that you're criticizing. Sam Harris for being? Yeah. And his answer is, you know, tribalism is an ugly thing. <laughs> wow. You're fucking David Brooks. Congratulations. Because that's the, that, that's your, that's always your go-to position when you are a monumental fucking hypocrite. When you just... Is that... It's absolutely. all tribalism. Yeah. yeah it's, and when you literally are everything you accuse everyone else of being all the time. Well, isn't that what Matthew Dowd did this week, though, too? Yeah. It seemed like it was there was like something in the water out there. Matthew Dowd was just declared it to be silly for people to pretend that the, basically the Republican Party is not synonymous with Trump supporters. They're the same thing, which is exactly. We've been saying that for three years now. Well, it is a exactly the opposite of what he was saying a year or less than a year ago, nine months ago, eight, eight, nine months ago. He was saying there's a clear distinction between Trump supporters and Trump voters. Uh huh. One's a subset of you know arguably crazy people, but you know the the, the, the other voters they, they're they're good people. They're good people. And pointing out to him that that was flagrantly wrong, incredibly uh, stupid. That a chief political analyst, you know, thank God your job isn't like chief political analyst because that's really stupid. I mean, even a plumber uh, or a chim- chimney sweep saying shit like that would be dumb. But man. I certainly hope you're not the chief political analyst for like a major network because that's insane. Um, and pointing out that that the idea that these people just appeared out of nowhere mm-hmm. or just precipitated out of thin air with the arrival of Donald Trump is stupid. These people created Donald Trump by existing at a critical mass in the Republican Party that you helped fucking create. Yeah. And and for pointing this out to him rather bluntly, <laughs> I he blocked me. Yeah. And, you know, I get all the time. Glenn Greenwald blocks me for pointing out the fact that he tends to lie a lot. Um, And he makes himself part of the story and that there's no bloody conflict or tragedy on Earth that he won't immediately uh, show up at, set up his card table and start handing out pamphlets for his for his pet cause. He's just that way. Um, And and uh, last but not least, Andrew Sullivan trending today for 
his his article in the New Yorker um, on IQ racism and liberalism or race IQ and liberalism. He's going back to the eugenics. He is going back to that over and over again. I don't I don't understand why, though. I really don't. Fucking British Tory. I know, and but he believes in it. He believes in it. He believes in a superior. There's a there's a planet on which his intellect reigns over all. His race. Yeah. His race. race. And, and, and it's it's because he's a white British male. And, and, and yeah. And he did not. It really uh, watching him come to reluctantly come to the belief that America had a civil war. Yeah. And it was about race and it was about slavery. And then we never really got over it, that those wounds are still there. That is something that he just wouldn't admit. Well, Drift Glass, I want, I do want to say though, that I do understand party loyalty. I do too. I understand wanting your side to win and wanting your side to succeed. Mm -hmm. And I, even I, sat down on the day after the election when I was devastated, mm -hmm. heard Donald Trump say, we're going to do a good job. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a good job. And I said, okay, he's president now. We got to give him a chance. Maybe he will hire good people because pe good people do want to work in the Oval Office. They do want to, and, and I may disagree with every single policy he makes, I'm not a Republican. I don't believe in Republican policies, mm -hmm. but maybe he'll pull this off by realizing, okay, I wasn't expecting to win, but I'm going to call people. I'm going to connect with people who know how this is done. There are people in the Republican Party who love governing, you know, who love running things mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll make this happen. And he can be a figurehead president like a lot of presidents have been. I mean, no president's been this. Big. We're not in. Not all presidents were totally engaged, neck deep in policy wonky. No, you know no, 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 that no, no. doesn't but, happen all the were, time. But you have were, a group of people around you, even if they're lobbyists, you have a group of people around you that want the wheels to turn, right? And so I wanted to, because I love my country, I wanted to give him that much of the benefit of the doubt, just that much. Like, okay, it's probably going to be a bunch of. You know, Liberty Caucus lobby, right wing lobbyists from CPAC who will flock in, swarm in and take over the White House and he'll go give speeches and we'll have terrible policies for four years, but he won't destroy the whole structure of government. Yeah. And that's not what happened. No, it's not. Not at all. And started, yeah. party loyalty. Yes. I like I said, I have sympathy for people who genuinely want to be loyal to what they've stood for for years. After Charlottesville, you don't get to do that. No, no. At, at that, that to me is the breaking point where somebody says Nazis are, are good people. You know, there are good people on that side. Well, and the reason I brought up Glenn Greenwald, mm -hmm. Andrew Sullivan, and uh, uh, David Brooks, he's, he's obligatory, and Matthew Dowd, mm -hmm. and this guy who uh, just quit Fox News, Oh yeah, who who has an editorial in the Washington Post today? Who has an editorial in the Washington Post? Ooh, yeah, uh, I read that. He's hmm. a retired army officer and you know worked in the Pentagon, was an intelligence officer and 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 um And may I just uh, just to flesh it out for people that haven't read it. He said in this op-ed at the at Wapo, uh -huh. Fox News refused to have me on when we were talking about Trump Russia because I refused to uh toe the party line at Fox. I believe that investigating Trump Russia is necessary to national security. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I bring him up mm -hmm. uh, is to mention a see if you can see the razor in the apple. <laughs> the first two sentences, you can measure the decline of Fox News by the drop in the quality of guests waiting in the green room. A year and a half ago, <laughs> there it is. Ding, ding, oh, ding, 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 ding. There it is. Now, um, and I, I, Send him a tweet, which he will not respond to, of course, because no one responds on Twitter to non-blue checks. But I pointed out that wait, so you just fucking noticed that Fox News was a was a dung heap, a lying, hypocritical, racist dung heap five minutes ago. Yep. And your job in the Pentagon was what now? Yeah. Oh, that's right. You were like an intelligence officer. Yep. Thank God, intelligence officers don't involve like 
noticing things. <laughs> Because your job was to lie on Fox News. Yeah. And you got paid a lot of money to do that. And and you were okay with 99% of the lies that you were asked to tell because that was your team, man. That was your team. Mm -hmm. But then they got you there that one thing, because it always gets worse. With fascists, it always gets worse. It's always going to go downhill. Because that one thing that you couldn't tolerate and you left on principle, fuck you, you have no principle. Yep. And, and said, oh, my God. Five minutes ago, Fox News turned into this horrible thing. A year and a half ago, it was great. It was wonderful. I enjoyed working there. But, you know, five minutes ago, they just lost their goddamn mind. Now, what does this guy and Andrew Sullivan and Glenn Greenwald and Matthew Dow and Mika Brzezinski, and Mika Brzezinski all have in common? They all get paid for this. They all get paid yeah. an enormous amount of money, and they're all horribly, horribly, horribly wrong each in their own individual category, but they, they fuck up, they shit the bed, they make fools of themselves, and they lie about the fact that they shit the bed, they lie about the Republican Party, they lie about shit they said last week, and they, they, and they cannot be fired. They cannot lose their job. This is something that um, uh, Tom, I can't think of his name, the 20 committee guy, uh, was going around and around on Twitter a couple of days ago about um, – the fact that he was angry, I suppose you just want all, all you know, conservatives fired from from the New York Times. Brett Stevens and, and Barry Weiss, you know, make shit up. And he was like, well, basically, you, that's how fascists think. You want to silence people who disagree with you. And the argument going back and forth was, no, I want, I want people who don't lie to get off the editorial page. And he just wouldn't hear of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, wait a minute, by that logic... Bill Crystal should still have a job at the New York Times because no one should ever be fired for anything ever if you're a conservative. Now, that's on one side of the ledger. On the other side of the ledger, there are writers who are blacklisted. Yeah. yeah. And I'm one of them who cannot get a paying gig anywhere writing for anybody, no matter what. So that's why I'm doing a fundraiser, Blue Gal. <laughs> well, and I think that's the thing to do is do a fundraiser. Hey. Because I, I the, the social experiment that was blogging, I mean, part of it mm -hmm. is writing, part of it's thinking out loud, and part of it's getting your opinions clear, uh, and part of it is interacting with readers and listeners and so forth. But part of it's the social experiment. Like, if if we on the left just persist in being right for long enough, eventually. And write well. And write well. Right. And, you know, know how to put adjectives and verbs together mm -hmm. and do it on a consistent basis, as a lot of liberals do, eventually. We just have to be able to erode our way. In and the cream rises to the top. You know, that's the thing. It just does. It's right. And, and it turns out that as a social experiment, that's an utter failure. There's absolutely a list of people like Andrew Sullivan who will always be found. Someone will always find a way to put money in his pocket. Right. And, but Drift Glass, I think part of that, I'm not, I don't mean to interrupt you. I think part of that is you and I are wired differently than a lot of people. And not, uh, you said social experiment. I don't think you and I are terribly social people. <laughs> no, I, I mean, as an as an experiment in uh, testing a thesis. I know, but I, what I'm saying is, you and I could borrow money and move to New York City, and do a real social experiment of knocking on doors and and meeting people and going to parties and getting to know all of the people we would need to get to know, even. Within liberal circles, even within circles where we would be welcomed. And, you know, we're not leaving the cornfield. <laughs> we're just not. And I think there's value in that. That's, that's half the experiment, though. The first half is, are there people who are consistently awful and wrong? Yes. Now, and, that's and, yes. Right. And, and if Correct. I, if I because there's there's this you know, another thing on Twitter. I hate I do hate bringing Twitter into this, but it's sort of ubiquitous. Um, that that liberals love their David Brooks. Mm -hmm. And I, I stepped into the middle of that and said, no, I've been writing about David Brooks now, literally today, as of today or as of this week, for 13 years. Mm -hmm. And I've been right about him for 13 years. And that makes me a complete pariah. That means I'm unhirable anywhere under any circumstances. No one's going to touch me with a fucking barge pole. But here's the thing. David Brooks has been wrong for decades. Andrew Sullivan's been wrong for decades. Uh, Gerson, Mika Brzezinski, they, they've all been, there's no penalty at all. The social experiment is if you fuck up once or twice, that's fine. But if you're, if, if you're radically and consistently wrong and then you lie about being wrong, 
there is a system in place to protect you if you are a certain sort of person. If, right. you, if you adhere to a certain party, it doesn't matter where you live, how tall you are, what your gender is. As long as you adhere to the Beltway story, the Beltway narrative, you've got a job for life. You can, you can never be touched. You, and, and, and it is ab- that thing is killing this country. Yes, it is. Absolutely killing this country. So part of the social experiment is if I just dog these people long enough, eventually I will be able to watch them go right off the edge of the earth and disappear because nobody can be that wrong for that many years and keep their fucking job. That just can't happen. But it did. And it is. And there's something else going on in this equation other than just sheer dumb luck or sheer chance or he, you know, well, I think it's social connections. I think people protect their friends. Yes. No matter what, no matter what no they matter protect what. their friends. Yeah. That's the, now we've hit on the problem because, and that's where it gets back to your team. Mm-hmm. If you protect your friends because they're having a bad day or a bad week or a bad month or going through a divorce. That's one thing. Mm-hmm. But if you are protecting your friends, if you're letting them use your media platform that reaches millions of people mm-hmm. to tell incredibly toxic lies, right? And then watch the world burn because they told those lies and then use your media platform to lie about telling those lies because this all happened just 18 months ago, Blue Gal. Right, right. (laughs) It happened 13 years ago. I've been watching this fucker for 13 years. This is not yesterday. And there is some sort of mystery about David Brooks where when people say David Brooks has been wrong for years and that did happen on Morning Joe. Yes. One time I heard it, and the gasp from Mika Brzezinski was... <gasps> you can hear... Everyone just shit themselves. Yeah. You're not allowed to say that. You're not no. allowed to say that. So if you are involved in, a, in, a, in an enterprise where you're not allowed to tell the truth, where you protect people who lie constantly, when you enrich people who lie constantly, and when their lies fall apart, you lie about the origins of those lies, right. and you do it from behind closed doors... Uh, at a network or at a newspaper, and you do it collaboratively so that everyone respects David Brooks and everyone respects Matthew Gr- and they're, they're all interchangeable. Yeah. Then you are dealing with a conspiracy. There is a conspiracy about David Brooks, for sure, for sure, that somehow he's got something on someone mm-hmm. or he has the ability to destroy careers with a phone call. And maybe he's done that with people and we just don't know it. But something's happened yes. where people give him an undue. And I mean that in the sense it is not due to him in a visual way that you and I can see mm-hmm. an undue amount of deference. And they keep adding to it the list of things that he gets to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, they keep giving him plaudits and they keep giving him gigs. And they, they just made him like a, an Aspen Institute you know, fellow or whatever. Yeah. And it it is mind boggling because then you, you expand that circle out and you realize that all these people, it's not about going to New York or DC and knocking on doors. It's that these people all live in the same gated universe. They all have a narrative that they desperately want to believe. And they all have the money to just enforce that narrative, that there is a reasonable Republican party and they're, and they are the people that we think are awesome. They're our friends and neighbors. And there's this, weird outlier group that we have nothing to do with that we certainly didn't create we 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 haven't that doesn't overlap with us at all and they just appeared five minutes ago with donald trump carrying donald trump on their their shoulders but once those people wise up once he goes away it'll be okay and it won't be okay yeah it won't be okay because the lies they tell the 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 amount of, of bullshit they allow to be infused into the public discourse is the problem yes because i've said this a million times before Every crackpot conservative I know has one go-to lie every time their the lie of the day breaks down, and that lie is well, both sides are bad. Both sides are equally bad. As let's let's give a specific example and do the do the news roundup. Yes, let's do that. Let's start with Joe Scarborough is not your friend. Hey, let's do that. We're directing this to our good friend Stephanie Miller, who um, <laughs> uh, who keeps putting him her on him on her show. Well, him, you know, we've disagreed in the past, but, you know, now we're all together on this whole Trump thing. No, he's not your friend, Stephanie. Yeah, he's he's a, he's trying to find a way out of the, the corner he has painted himself into, which is writing Donald Trump's speeches for him. Yes. And spending a year and a half 
excusing Donald Trump well, right now, even as we speak, at the very top of the page at Crooks and Liars. Yep. There's an article by Francis Langham entitled, Mika says Democrats should take notes from Trump voters. I got my notes right here, Mika. Yeah, I got right here. I, I hear good things about that, that writer. The, I got the three years of notes on how her show coddled Donald Trump. Yeah. And, uh... But even even as much as that was bad, and I'll I'll quote her in a moment, uh, the both siderism in the guise of calling out Trump voters. Right. This is the this is the thing. This is again razor in the apple time. Mm -hmm. They had there. a discussion this morning, Friday morning on Morning Joe, of yet another Trump panel, Trump supporter panel. Saying, oh, we think that the Trump Russia is a witch hunt. If only they would give Donald Trump a chance to succeed. He just wants to do great things for the country. Uh, I believe that Hillary Clinton stole uranium and made uh, Russia a nuclear power. Sure. <laughs> she does that. Oh, uh, what is silk and who are those African American ladies? Diamond and silk. Yeah, went on went on Fox and Friends to repeat Sean Hannity conspiracy theories about Uranium One right. today, yeah. and they loved it. Not not a year ago. Not, not a year ago. Today. today. So, so here's this Trump voter panel, and uh, Mika says Democrats don't didn't listen enough to these blue collar voters during the election, <laughs> and put their heads in the sand, and that's why we're here today. That's why we have Trump today. Yeah. And they better oh, take notes on these Trump voters because they they hid away from these Trump voters and they better take notes. Translation. Yeah, it's not I my didn't, fault. I didn't listen. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I right. I was hiding out in Joe Scarborough's jockstrap. Right, and and year. buying shoes at Barney's. Yeah, no, so. I chose not to listen to any of these. I chose to pretend these people. There were these liberals at the window pounding on the glass, screaming for us to pay attention to these fucking lunatics. Stop Man. having Donald Trump phone in interviews. That was, you know, just don't make him that important. And she was taking personal phone calls from him. She was taking, you know, during coverage, uh, there were hot mics offset of her telling him what the questions we're going to ask you next. Yep. It's all about access. And so here's the deal. Joe uh, disagreed with Mika. Said, no, no, they're dead wrong. These Trump voters are dead wrong. They're not entitled to their own facts. And they're just dead wrong. And then he stopped right there. And he stopped right there. No, he didn't. He said, no. it happens on both sides. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? 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 There are a large number. This is what he said. Quote, there were a large number of Democrats back in 2005 and 2006 that believed that George W. Bush took down the Twin Towers. And here's part of the conspiracy. Yes, they had a right to believe that, but they were ignorant and they were wrong. Uh-huh. And... Uh, so I went through and, and made a list of all of the elected uh, congressmen who believe that George W. Bush took down the Twin Towers. How long a list is that? Please? Zero. Oh, zero. That's right. Nobody got elected. Nobody at any level got elected or nominated. Right. Who believed that? Who believed that? No. How many people do you suppose on the Republican? No. How many? How many? How many left wing liberal blogs banned? Yeah. People who believe that from their comment section. Pretty much all of them. Pretty much all of them. Almost immediately. Yep. Uh, so I wanted Joe Scarborough to show me the 9-11 truthers elected to Congress. Mm -hmm. And then I want to pry his eyes open clockwork orange style mm -hmm. <laughs> and sit him in a seat and show him videos of Louis Gohmert, Steve King, Joe Barton, etc. If I can't do that, if that's a bridge too far, I'd like to... Just make him watch Chris Matthews' interview with Peter King from 2013, in which Peter King, Republican congressman from New York, said that the reason the government was about to shut down in 2013 was that there were 30 or 40 birthers in Congress uh -huh. orchestrating a government shutdown to delegitimize Barack Obama. That they was were, why we were going to have a government shutdown. To be fair, to be fair, Blue Girl, those birthers were on both sides of the aisle, right? No. <laughs> oh, no, they weren't. weren't no, they, they were weren't. They were all in one fucking party, weren't they? Nope. You know what? I, you call them birthers. I choose to call them independents. Uh, they were independent. Yeah, right. They're independent. I'm not a Republican. 
Uh, I'm an independent. So, uh, yeah, sh- that that was the whole point is that then Mika said, well, you know, the reason we're here today is Democrats had their heads in the sand during the entire election. Right. During the entire election. That's why we're here today. They should take notes and listen to these voters who support Trump. Uh, Carolee at Crooks and Liars reminded me that there's another group of voters maybe Mika wants to take some notes from. They're called women. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and how dare you suggest we are here now because we didn't listen to Trump voters enough, ignoring your phone in interviews and all the bootlicking you did. Right. Well, uh, I pulled up a video of one of many, but it's my personal favorite. July of 2016, Donald's got his groove back, yeah. uh, says Mika. He's, he's speaking in Ohio. July of 2016, she said, you saw him connecting with the crowd in a way no other politician in the history of politics that we know ever could. Yeah. What a guy. What a guy. What? And 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 that's out of context, but it doesn't matter because I could go on and say he connects. She said he connects with the Did people. Mojo back? Did he get mojo? Yeah, yeah. And of course, here's the here's why this matters. Mm-hmm. You and I have been deeply. You've been actually blogging longer than me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. By a few months, not not by, by a real long time, but yeah. But, and we've both been active and sort of interested participants, participant in our participatory, in our participatory democracy since we were teenagers. Right. Fair to say. Eighteen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're not teenagers anymore, so we and we pay attention. There are people, most people, I would argue, most voters just do drive by. They, you know, I I work with people, I talk to people around this town. I did it in Chicago when I lived there, who pay virtually no attention to politics until like two weeks before the election. Mm-hmm. Maybe a week. They get a bunch of ads. Everyone hates everybody. Everyone's awful, et cetera, et cetera. They do not know that Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski conspired to give Donald Trump hundreds of millions of dollars of free publicity. Right. They just know what they saw today. Mm hmm. Because yesterday doesn't exist for them. So they are the people who are constantly being barraged with this bullshit. About it all happened a year and a half ago. Yeah. It all happened yesterday. The, and it's Trumpism. Let's not forget Trumpism. Yep. Let's all remember that the people who created this catastrophe, who helped create this catastrophe, are the people who own the cameras. Yeah. And yeah. own the newspapers. Yep. And, and they are the ones who are, who are absolutely dead set against letting anyone inside the perimeter who will point out that this has been going on for decades. Yep. Yep. That, that I can... And this is why having a, an archive is handy because I can go back 13 years and I can pull up year after year after year after year. You can watch the the, the march of time. It's like being in the time machine, and you know, uh, with Rod Taylor watching the dresses go up and down in the, in the George Powell version of the time machine. I believe it was George Powell. Um, you can watch the progression of time. You can watch it happen right before you, like like a little flip book. And see how the Republican Party has always been this way. Mm-hmm. And how the same people who, who keep apologizing for it and swearing that it's not them, that, 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 that it'll fix itself, that the, the Renaissance is right around the corner. And anyway, Democrats are just as bad, have been telling that same fucking lie for decades. Mm-hmm. And the end result of that is a uh, millennials vote at 3% in, in our Illinois primary this year. Yeah, yeah. Because they believe the system is fucked. That both sides are terrible. The the corrupt duopoly is 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 a disaster. Everyone is equally bad. Politics itself is 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 beyond redemption. I'll just walk away. That's a win for the Republican. Yes, it is every time. Every time someone out of the political process and say, "Don't even bother checking the labels. Everything's terrible." Mm -hmm. That's a win for the Republicans. And the people who control the cameras, that control the microphones, that control the newspapers, that's their game. So, Drift, uh, speaking of controlling the microphones, let's talk about Laura Ingram for a minute. Let's do that. Because she controlled a microphone this week. This and then is the, week of the march. I mean, we, we, and we, we haven't even talked about the march, which was last Saturday. It's hard to believe. I know. I know. Uh, about, what did they say, maybe 800,000, but only 300,000 if you were watching Fox News? Well, a couple of dozen if you watch. Junior dude went to the March for Our Lives in Washington D.C. He took a but there was a busload of college students from uh, Augustana. Augustana College who went overnight and 
spent the day listening to the speeches and uh he said it was an hour wait for porta potty. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Look at the revolution, my friend. That's why you have a pee jar. Yeah, yeah. Well, he did all right. Uh, and, and I think it was life changing. He wants to go again for the next protest. I said, next protest? I don't think there's going to be any more Washington protests. You'll have to just give up. Mm. Can, I, can I tell you one brief aside and we'll get right back to this? Yeah. Uh, a woman I work with who works with the local Springfield organizers, the high school organizers yeah. of that local version, they came back to her afterwards and said, what, what next? Yeah. Yeah. What, what can we do next? We're, we love this. We love being involved. They love it. That's the thing. People that age and up until their 30s, hell, up until their 70s, want to get involved. They yep. want to. They want to make a difference. Absolutely. They really do. And killing that in them is is unforgivable. It is unforgivable for for political power. But we've learned that people are willing to do anything, sure. even apologize in the spirit of Holy Week. The spirit of Holy for political <laughs> for political power. You're willing to say that. You let those words come out of your mouth or out of your Twitter stream. Now we're talking about Laura Ingram now. Yeah. In the spirit of Holy Week, I'm going to, and, you know, and I do understand why people doubt the existence of God because she wasn't struck down with a lightning bolt at that moment. Uh, but let's talk about Laura Ingram and the history of media boycotts because. Well, then, then you flip over, uh, just, just one little aside. Then you flip over to MSNBC mm -hmm. and uh, Andrea Mitchell has some fucking pastor on, I'm on the radio, I, I'm listening to it, not watching it, but who's there saying, you know, I think what David Hogg did is so brave and nice, but you know, I know Laura Ingram and she's a great person. She's known to be a Christian. Uh-huh. the races because she's a good Christian and she loves God and God loves her and, you know, she's just trying to, and that guy should never be on, allowed anywhere near, a, 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 a pious hypocrite, a Pharisee like that. Oh yeah, but they're everywhere. Who backs thugs who wrap their bigotry in script. And wear a cross. The, and the, Laura cross Ingram wears a little gold cross around her neck. Ann Coulter wears a little gold cross around her neck. And that makes them Christian. And and they hate the gays. And they, and they you know, speak speak about Jesus not, hate, not loving the gays. So that makes them Christian. So when you have pushback, and this is where we're getting to, there is an army. There's a Pez dispenser full of, of interchangeable wingnut uh, pastors, uh, conservative who, who they'll roll out on the stage and talk about Jesus and forgiveness. And, you know, God's in your heart. And, you know, I know Laura personally, I can vouch for her Christianity. No, whatever the hell she believes has nothing to do with Jesus Christ it has nothing to do with Christianity. It's Christopathy. It's fake Christianity. And the entire Republican party feeds off this inverted, hateful, alternate, bizarro version of Christianity. Because if you took that away from her, there would be no Republican party. Right. So Laura Ingram learned the hard way that the game has changed. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the history of media boycotts. Yeah. Because I remember a, a woman named Sandra Fluke. <laughs> yes, you do. I do, too. Yeah, I remember she was called a slut and a whore by uh, Rush Limbaugh. Rush, and Rush Limbaugh, who is off the air now, right? He's off the air. He's No, he's not off the air. No, he's not off the air. He's still making money. Slut. Uh, there was a boycott that was directed at him. It was it was successful up to a certain point, uh, but it was just as bad. It was just as hateful. He he used his giant platform to attack this woman. Um, and you know the reason I remember this is because the liberal superpower is memory. Yep. Um, having memory is is the thing we have. And I vividly remember the pushback I kept hearing from people like Stephanie Miller on the radio. When, Who we love. Who we love. This is a family fight. But you get to the point where, okay, um, we can shout and scream and wave our hands. That's great. Uh, we can call Rush Limbaugh a, a lying racist gas bag, but we've been doing that for 20 years and he's still there. Uh, he still runs the Republican Party. Uh, it, it, apparently, none of this doing nothing loudly, waving your hands loudly does no good at all. So where does it hurt? Oh, it hurts in the wallet. And so people started talking about boycotting Rush Limbaugh, and that was when liberal radio said, wait a minute, wait, 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 let's not get crazy here. <laughs> let's not get crazy, because if you boycott Rush Limbaugh, his sponsors will go, well, radio itself, talk radio itself is so controversial, let's just pull our ads from everywhere, and we take their money too. So but Drew Klatz, I think that's I think that's a valid argument from the standpoint that radio is a weaker 
medium these days than television. I agree that it's a valid argument, but then don't turn around and tell me to march. Don't okay. turn around and tell me to do the other things, because there is one thing you know for a fact that will actually bring the monster down. And well, and maybe awesome. you don't, yeah, and you have to tell us whether you want to bring the monster down or not. Maybe you don't want to bring the monster down, because that gives one, I'm, I'm going to be generic here, because I don't necessarily lack sympathy no, for no, no. the livelihood argument. No, I don't <laughs> okay. <either. laughs> Believe me, I don't I'm, I'm going to push back a little bit on this because the livelihood argument matters. Having voices like Stephanie Miller's on a national scale as much as possible matters. But I agree with you that we shouldn't come to this in a begging way, right? Um, on the other hand, doing... I now see why... <laughs> You don't go, you aren't invited on MSNBC. Yes. Because the right wing is just as capable of staging a boycott of a specific person that would have you on. Yep. And perhaps that is David Brooks' superpower. Perhaps he has the phone numbers of certain advertisers and could talk to his friends at General Mills or whatever. Mm -hmm. And say, don't, don't sponsor that. They're mean to me. Maybe that's well, maybe that's his superpower. Well, I, all I can tell you is, um, you didn't ha they didn't have to boycott Melissa Harris Perry. No, they didn't. All she had to do was step out of the line one time, and she was gone. And so she the, and she stepped out of line in terms of her the conditions of her work, not what she was saying. That's right. And she was gone the next day. Yep. And so the the cowardice on the part of network executives. Um, no, well, no, 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 no. I don't think that's what I'm saying. I don't think Melissa Harris Perry was was fired out of co the cowardice mm -hmm. of network executives. I don't think they liked her talking back to them in private about preempting her show for football. That's what I mean. Right. That they are that fragile. That they that she exists at their sufferance, and that the slightest pressure. And she's gone. Okay. Whereas you can heap all the pressure you want in Sean Hannity. He's not going anywhere. And and Fox News will go down with the ship before they give up Sean Hannity. And Yeah, that's true. It's, it's real easy to fire liberals. Yeah. It's real easy to fire liberals. It's apparently nearly impossible to get rid of. Well, uh, it's probably a little harder to find people who will sell their souls to the extent that they will. I think it's an easier market to find liberals to be on TV, frankly. The only, the only way you can stop a conservative on television is to catch him in a sex scandal. Yep. That's or it. saying the N-word. Yeah. Yep. Because because uh, Bill O'Reilly was an absolute monster for years. Yes. And every time there was any action taken against him, all that Fox News would say was, look at his ratings. Look yep. at his ratings. Look yep. at his ratings. Then... He got busted being Mr. Grabby Hands and having to pay out thirty million dollars. Was it? It was. Well, that was the thing. It was costing him again. It's the conditions of your employment. It's not what you say or who you are. He the conditions of his employment were just getting too expensive for the network, and he had to go. And when it became public how much they were paying, then all of the affiliates, all of the other shows, everyone else knows. How much this one guy is costing in terms of budgeting. We have to budget these millions of dollars to pay off people that were being abused by him. Right. Uh, All of which makes the argument, but let me just take this one step further. All of which makes the argument they don't care about anything but money. Right. Well, At all. exactly. That's their business is money. The only way to change what you see on television is by threatening their, their finance. Right. Going after their money. You cannot change... The, the lineup on Fox News by by being right. Right. By proving right. them wrong, by showing that, that Sean Hannity's a fucking liar every night of the week. You and have if, to if someone yeah, and there are there are certain things that are so uh antithetical to the bottom line that they do immediately go. I agree with you. You know, a rape, uh saying the N word, uh being being overtly racist, although let's face it you know, uh, 
Uh, Bill O'Reilly did the <laughs> motherfucking iced tea. You know, I was so surprised to walk into a black re- restaurant and they behave like human beings. Oh, my God. Well, Judge Napolitano yeah. um, lied on the air, lied yeah. constantly. Yeah. Uh, the FBI and the British Secret Service came back and said, son of a bitch is lying. And the penalty for lying on a news network mm-hmm. uh, on Trump's behalf is 30 minutes in a penalty box. Yep. And you get right back on. There is no penalty because the only thing they care about is the bottom line, which leads us to Mr. David Hogg. Yep. Uh, and David Hogg is uh, a, a smart telegenic young white male. Yes, he is. And I do believe that if David Hogg was a black man, this boycott would not be happening. We would be hearing a word about it. We would. Well, it wouldn't have gone as swiftly uh, where massive numbers of advertisers are pulling out of the uh, Ingram show. Honestly, if it, if if you're if you were that, it would be Black Lives Matter. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. Getting away with calling them a, a domestic terrorist organization. Right. And, and right. Yada yada yada. Yep. Uh, and and part of it is she punched down a little too hard on one person who has 650,000 Twitter followers, right? He does everyone, have a social media presence. And everyone else on the right did too because their reaction is yep. always the same. If challenged, destroy the challenger. Right, Just right. Just nuke them online. Make right. sure there's, there's no, nothing left. And they picked the wrong fight with the wrong demographic. Right, they did. They did because – that's where the future consumers of America are, yeah. right? Yeah. And what is what is a cool product? Who is determining what a cool product is? Not that he's endorsing any products, but he is the future of this country. He is disendorsing products. Yes, he is disendorsing products. Exactly. Let's look at the list of advertisers. And, and he did it um, very kind of... I think innocently. I don't think he realized what he was shaking up by doing that because he did change history when he did that. He changed the trajectory of how we now do political activism against right wing media. Uh Um, If it's if it's his generation doing it, if and and let's also give credit to the gay rights movement, who uh, really took on uh, their role within big companies as employees uh-huh. and as uh, valued talent <laughs> to say, you know, maybe you shouldn't piss us off because we're here to work and we're giving our talent to your company and making a profit for you. And now it's time to pay, pay us back with backing us up on marriage equality. And uh, it, <laughs> the, the whole thing with Georgia when Disney just said, you know, we're not putting up with this. We're not, we don't want to talk about bathroom bills. And yeah. the governor of Georgia like, yep, we're not going to talk about that. We're done. Yep. <laughs> well, and, and just as a, a historical reminder, I think I've mentioned this before. It was not the Montgomery Boyce bus Twitter storm. Yes, it was not. That's right. It was the Montgomery bus boycott. Right, right. Um, and there's, there's a price to be paid. Don't Every union that ever went on strike. Yeah. Uh, go back go back to uh, um, Haymarket Riots. Go back to to uh, uh, unions being literally busted, having their heads broken, having being murdered by the Pinkertons that the the folks would hire, the owners would hire to to hurt them. To yep. There's yep. always an economic price to pay when you take on power. And let's be very clear: Fox is power. Yeah. State radio is power. Well, and what Reagan did to unions was power and an abuse of power. So. Um, we, that's a longer discussion for another day. Yeah, but it's never ouchless. It's never yeah. without a cost. And, and you have to decide, is the situation bad enough where we have to say, look, you know, where you have to do, um, you have to come out of your shell. And I have to say, you know, usually this broadcast would be blah, blah, blah. But today we have to talk about Joe McCarthy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have to take him on personally and directly. We have to put my, my economic future at risk. I have to put the network sort of in a, in a, in a twist. Because the clear and present domestic threat to my country is so bad that I have to put it all on the line. Yeah. And we've reached that place. And there are people who are on our team, and there are people who ain't on our team. Yeah. And we need to be really clear about who the people – and and there are people who want to be in the middle, and they can't be in the middle anymore. If you're in the middle, then you're on the right. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you think you're in the middle, you're on the right. Um, you want to talk a little about Rodney Davis? Bring it down local? <laughs> we could bring it down local. I, yeah. I don't know how we talk about it, how we talk about what's happening when it's the police. Stefan Clark, uh-huh. there is a march going on in Sacramento right now. Uh, he was shot in the back six times. Uh, the, the, the bullets hit him eight times, I believe they deci- they discovered. Uh, of course, there were, you know, m- many more shots fired at a man who was holding a cell phone in his grandmother's backyard. How do you boycott that? Yeah. How do you... Uh, yeah. I don't know how you counter white supremacy when it's the cops. Well, isn't it always the cops, ultimately? Yeah. Isn't it always the, isn't, I mean, that's, it wasn't strangers busting heads on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Right. It was the cops. Yeah. It was, it was the police. It was, and the, the, let's be very clear. The police are an arm of the state. They're the violent arm of the state. And they're a violent arm of the white state. And I, yeah. yeah. And they're the only organization that is sanctioned to kill people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why the comparison of cops to gangs is stupid. Gangs don't have social approval for what they do right cops do cops are given the jury right. and juries will not convict a cop they just won't and, yeah and that's and it is necessary you act you actually have to have a police force in a civilized society you have to have laws they must be enforced right but right and and there are good cops out there who do risk their lives every day and want to build a community and i get that there are but the police as an idea in our society needs to be fixed and the people who should be leading the march mm-hmm. to get rid of racist cops to right. clean up right. should be those good cops. Right. Exactly. You know, that, that if, they're, if they're out there in such large numbers, and we always say, well, you know, most of cops are good. Fine. Where are you? Yeah. Where yeah. is – where? why aren't you – Because, the, again, it's the protecting your friends, not making waves, not making it a big deal, I'll lose my job kind of thing. Yeah. And, and it's also then it's the DA – who doesn't want to make the chief of police mad because he depends on the chief of police for his evidence. Uh, yeah, it's, Mayor. and the mayors. And, and again, this, this, like guns, like, uh, gay rights, like schools, uh, you know, it, the, the one thing that makes me laugh more than anything that's said on television is when it's, you know, Democrats really don't have any ideas. And it's like, really? <laughs> a lot of ideas. A really lot of ideas. Lots? They just happen to be common sense. You know, well, police shouldn't shoot unarmed citizens. Uh, everything you just named is a function of government. Right. Right. And right. Everything that happens in government is a function of elections, of, of the yep. people you choose to yep. lead government, the priorities you set when those people decide a budget. For so the only way to fix this then is to get involved locally yeah. And elect people who will hold police accountable. That's a hard row to hoe. We've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. Uh, but you keep, you keep working at it. And, and, um, yeah, it, it's a tragedy. It, and <laughs> it makes me so, um, upset that, uh, you know, we're, we, we don't have the, we don't seem, I'm one person. I get very frustrated that I can't be in Sacramento right now. Right. Screaming right. at screaming at everybody. Um, and part of me knows that there are people like us in Sacramento. Oh, exactly. Exactly. There's yeah. a great deal of solace in knowing that no matter how alone you feel, I'm, I'm sitting literally in a folding chair in front of my closet. Right. Which is my sound booth. Right. On a borrowed computer in the middle of a quiet day in the middle of a cornfield. Mm hmm. But I am legion. Yeah, Millions yeah. People like me out there. Yep. I don't feel alone. It, 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 writing and, and podcasting is inherently a lonely task because that's what you're doing. Well, but the two of us are doing together. Yeah. Yes. But there, but there aren't just the two of us. And I outed myself this week to a couple of people. Yep. And that felt good. A couple of people at church a couple of weeks ago said, "Hey, do you have that podcast?" Yeah, we do. It's mm-hmm. not quite a secret society, but it. <laughs> that, there are like-minded people out there who get it, who re- who who just need to hear that they're not alone. That mm-hmm. they, they can march out into public 
into the public and there will be people around them and behind them who agree with them yeah support them they're not crazy they're not out here alone even if you especially if you live in the middle of a place where there's nothing but right-wing radio yeah nothing fox on television yeah um you're not alone you really aren't yep Um, and one of the ways we're going to prove that is by getting rid of rodney davis (laughs) please tell tell us about how we're going to get rid of rodney davis who is our representative let me give a little bit of background he's our representative he has blocked my ability to comment on his facebook page he does not believe in town halls and he is a whip for paul ryan and his most famous uh whip effort was trying to take my kids health care away yeah and then having a beer afterwards and then yeah. fumbling around and sweating and looking like the deer in the headlights because people didn't like the fact that he was taking their family's health care away yep and, and repeal, replace, repeal, replace. Well, we've, you voted for that 72 times when Barack Obama was president. No, you never actually have to do it because you're a fucking coward. Mm-hmm. Now you actually have to govern, and all you don't do is want to get rid of it. What's the plan to replace it? And the answer is always just him shitting himself and looking really bug-eyed on camera yep. and then changing the subject because he's a moron. He has no answer to that question. He he so, is one of the dumb ones. I mean, one of the, one of the helmet-headed car salesman type low IQ, and I mean that in the way Donald Trump tried to call another congresswoman low IQ. Some of these guys really are low IQ. It just dumb people. Well, he knows how to repeat, you know, the, the nine top talking points, and he knows how to you exactly. know, not offend it. And that's what he's trying to do this time. Yeah. Um, he, he he is not happy with the, with the omnibus budget package that his party negotiated, that his president approved of, that he his people put together that his people passed and that his president signed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now he says it sucks because you know why blue cow, you know why, you know why it sucks. No, why both sides, both, both sides, both sides. Yeah. And there's, there might be some truth to that. I, I kind of delighted by the fact that, um, that the, the budget process, which is entirely controlled by the Republican party had Republican people from the white house representing it. And when the bill came out, Apparently, with the approval of the people who the White House had sent to negotiate, Donald Trump found there was no money for his stupid fucking wall. Yep. And just said, oh, I hate this bill. I hate it. I'm not going to sign it. I'm not. All right, fine. Fuck you. I'll sign it, but I'm never going to sign it again. And, and just pouted. He yep. didn't have a signing ceremony. He didn't do his stupid little five-year-old holding up his poo-poo picture. Look, I signed it. I'm a big man kind of thing. And. That's what – and Rodney Davis wants to shrug that off as a, as the fault of both sides. Isn't it a shame, Blue Gal, how the extremes on both sides? And Rodney Davis is a, is a middle-of-the-road kind of guy. He just wants to run right up the middle and please, please, please let me keep this job because I'm not really qualified to do anything. And the Republican Party that he hopes to belong to is about to be burned to the ground. I hope so. There's, there's nothing else for him to do. And he's responded – to the overwhelming demand for town hall meetings, it's been very clear, by saying that he has no intention of holding town halls ever again. Yeah, he doesn't believe in them. Because he talks to constituents all the time. So why hold town hall meetings? It doesn't make no sense. Um, and he is just, I, and at a certain tactical level, there's nothing he can do. He can't run on his record because he has no record. He can't run on, on being bravely opposed to the excesses of Donald Trump because he was the whip of the worst legislation that they tried to ram through. Uh, he's he's a funder. <laughs> he's a fundraiser. And he's just trying to say, please don't notice me. Just yep. just let me slide through on just being your buddy because we went to the same high school together, right, pal? And I don't think there's enough goodwill left in this district to let him get away with that shit ever again. And yep. the woman who's running against him has a rather mighty political machine behind her now. Yep. And that's a yep. very encouraging thing. It is. It is. And and it's run by women. <laughs> yeah. Well, and speaking of that omnibus budget. Yes. Um, apparently, Donald Trump has started to tweet photos taken in 2009. <laughs> and they're, they're the start of our, our southern border wall. No, this isn't. Did he just Google wall and come up with this one and it didn't have... Yeah, I don't I don't understand how he just doesn't have anybody working for him. No, that's the thing. Yeah, I think he, he Googled wall and came up with a picture of Ken Wall, who is an actor, I believe, <laughs> and, and tweeted him for some reason. He's just an idiot. But yeah, he, he went through the uh, uh, 
now he's going to start talking about, first of all, he's ordered his uh, meatheads to stop talking about Mexico. Mm-hmm. We're not going to do the call and response anymore. Now, you know, I have everyone and their brother in the liberal universe has, and Mexico will pay for it as their fucking ringtone. Right. I'm wearing a lot. Of, I apologize. Um, I have, I have extraordinary faith in the pliability and the stupidity of the average Republican voter. Yeah. But they will simply be told that never happened. And there's a, oh, they've oh they've already made up uh, whole accounting mechanisms by which by which Mexico will pay for the wall, including I heard one directly aimed at me. Well, we're just going to tax all that money that people send back to Mexico from working here illegally. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of scams. Wait, there. you're going to take the money that they they get paid under the table yes. and tax it? Yes. I thought. <laughs> This is how Trump University was run. Yeah, you know? it, I'm, it, I'm, it I'm trying to figure out what they, how they think they're going to do that. But and the same meatheads believe it. So yeah. I have, I have infinite faith in the average Republican voter's ability to, to now that they're completely lobotomized, to just pretend it never happened or it was a joke or we'll figure it out. Or look, Benghazi. Well, what about our emails? Mm-hmm. Uh, they're never going to admit that they were that, that they're that stupid because what alternative? I, at that point, they really do have to put rocks in their pockets and walk into the ocean because they're not really able to be functioning human beings in our society anymore. And they're never going to admit that. So they're going to find some workaround why that didn't count or didn't really mean it or was a metaphor or whatever. But the way he plans to pay for his big dumb fucking wall is by taking food out of the mouths of soldiers. Yep. And that because you know what? And I'm quoting now the military is now rich. Yeah. Yeah, they're real rich because we gave them all this money, just threw money at them, so they're rich. Tax money. Yeah. Our tax money. And that's how he thinks of money. It's If I have a bunch of it, if I, it doesn't matter where it came from. I stole it. I ripped it off. Little old ladies. I, 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 I ripped them off a dead guy. I took his teeth. doesn't matter. I'm rich now. I, I laundered it for the Russian oligarchs. Yeah, now I'm rich. That's all that matters. I, I'm rich, rich, rich. So the military is rich now. Um, and that's a slap to one side of your face. But, you know. Soldiers will turn the other cheek, and when they turn the other cheek, what will they see? They will see David Shulkin, yep, <laughs> who was hired five minutes ago to run the VA, and then fired via Twitter uh, because he decided he would stand in the way of the Trump administration trying to loot the place by privatizing the VA. Yep, and he's being replaced by Donald Trump's personal physician, his White House physician, who thinks Donald Trump's in super great condition. Donald Trump, according to Ronnie Jackson, is 12 feet tall, uh, 110 pounds, can run like the wind, has a sweet musk to him, and will probably live to be a thousand. That's great. And he might be a really great guy, but he's never run anything larger than a pancake house. And they're going to give him the most dysfunctional um, department in the entire government with hundreds of thousands of people to supervise and myriad problems. Because Donald Trump cares so much about the military that he's going to take their money away and give them someone who can't possibly meet their needs and then blame it on Barack Obama, apparently. So the question is, how stupid are Republicans? Pretty, pretty, pretty damn. Well, you know, I don't know about stupid. They're willing to tell themselves anything to save face and maintain power. And what, but when when the when conservatives, when Republicans in the military who have members of their family who are veterans well, this is the thing, though. This this is what Malcolm Nance says. He said, this is not going to happen. Mm-hmm. You can't, the, the, the legislative process and the budgeting process, These this money that's going to the Pentagon is earmarked for very specific things. And if you think that, uh, I don't know, Archer Daniels Midland's contract with the military and uh, uh Name some military contractors. <laughs> I, oh, I, um, um, Morton Thiokol. Right. Um, you know, all Boeing. Boeing. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, if that they're going to go, oh, yeah, you can shave off 10% Donald for your wall. No problem. Yeah. You know, these contracts are dollars and cents that are contract. That's why it's called a contract, Donald. I know you don't believe in, con- in that you have to live up to any contract that you ever signed, and then you just don't sign them. You know, that's another good way to get out of it. Right. But – this is these are military contracts. This isn't just he just thinks well they're rich now, so they have extra money. All that ex, really you put you're admitting that you put 
extra un- earmarked money in the military budget. And, and I I agree that we have we wildly overspend on our military. Yes, right. The idea that I mean it it it's this alone, this mm-hmm. one thing alone would sink any other administration. Yeah, it, well, it would be well to what? drift class, drift class. You know that NBC News reported this week that. Uh, a U.S. Special Forces commander who spoke on condition of anonymity to NBC said, we're on the two-yard line, we're that close to total victory, to wiping out ISIS in Syria. Wow. We've sent them memos, we tell the White House what is going on, but we're not sure they're listening, or if they even know what we're doing out here. I don't think anyone is home right now. I, I, um... That's what I hear, Blue Gal. Um, that I mean, really, if you just look, I, I, I don't have any particular insight, but um, at the impeachment level, yeah, uh, Donald Trump's personal legal team is now down to one person, and we're throwing away a victory against ISIS right. because no one's home in the White House, and he, and that's not an impeachable offense because because well, Paul Ryan, because Paul, well, that's the thing. If the cops, curls himself into a ball and won't stand up to Donald Trump, who's failing the military right now, back, right this minute. Which are Ryan and McConnell are are completely um, sold out, are, yep. are soulless, corrupt yep. scum. Yeah. Then that that is again that, that is not a, a, a contingency the Constitution envisioned, where there no. would be political parties and one political party would control every branch of government and the that political party would be completely corrupt, and that the free and fair press wouldn't talk about it right well the free and fair press at nbc is talking about it yeah well that there, that's them but donald trump thinks he can be his own communication director so yep staff he's got one lawyer he's gonna again his buddy's gonna run the va he's running it like a small family business yeah and he's running like a mob family. business yeah. you mean yes and it's and and when he's not just firing people gutting departments rolling things back doing everything he could possibly do to destroy the federal government, which conservatives love the idea. And let's be very clear. Conservatives hate this country. Mm -hmm. And therefore, every time he wrecks another department, that makes a conservative angel get their wings. Because wrecking this country is what conservatives want to do. That is their goal. They would like direct governance by corporations if they happen to be. Well, and and in order to keep the rubes happy, they have to have that healthy dose of racism. Right. Uh, there's a, there's also a new Trump proposal that Governing Magazine uh, noted today that would penalize legal immigrants for getting tax refunds. Yes. yes. So there's <laughs> – it's okay because we're going to tax the illegals and their earnings to pay for the wall. That's how Mexico is going to pay for it. Well, it turns out but we're not going to let people who are here legally – even though we're for legal immigration. No, we're not. No, we're not. They're really not. They're, They're really, really not. not. Hey, Drift Glass, I want to give you one piece of good breaking news. I love good breaking Although, news. Although, you might be kind of sad, though. Okay. It might make you sad. I don't know. Oh, no. Um, do you remember that Stacey Dash was going to run for Congress? I do. Not anymore. Oh, no. What happened to her? Her hopes were dashed? Her they hopes dashed were dashed. Oh. Yeah. She withdrew Someone... her congressional oh. bid this afternoon. Is it because of the extremes on both sides, Will Gale? I think the people on both sides didn't want her to run. <laughs> I, I believe people on one side really did want her to run. I really, 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 really did really want her. her. I really wanted her to run. Yeah, well, yeah. And now I'm I'm heartbroken, Will Gale. I'm heartbroken. I'm getting all my wishes this year. <laughs> you know, in terms of politics, um, everything is sort of like this. And this is the, the downside of the upside. Um, I remember a Tom Friedman column I wrote about – uh, must have been 13 years ago mm-hmm. where he was it, Iraq was falling apart and yeah. it was all going to shit. And he wrote about, you know, the sort of the, the no one wants to talk about Iraq anymore. Right. It's a shame that no one, no, no. And I just lost my temper on online. I, and I was just, I just want to throttle that son of a bitch. Like, We've been talking about nothing but this and it gives us no pleasure to be right. Right. We right. told you if you right. jump out of a burning building, that's not really burning. At halfway down, gravity takes over. The minute you're no, the minute you're in free fall, gravity takes over. Yeah, yeah. You know, once you commit yourself to this action, we're screwed, man. Yep. And yep. and you did, and now we're screwed. And now you'd like to blame everybody but yourself. What, nobody I know, no liberal, who's happy that Donald Trump is doing this. Nope. We're heartbroken. 
Yep. It kills us. But what more can we do other than personally visit Joe Scarborough, kick in his fucking door and demand that he go on the air and start putting people on the air who were who haven't lied to the American people for the last 20 years? Yeah. And yeah. tell them the truth. Yeah. And that doesn't seem to be a viable option. But it it isn't delightful that we're right. It is killing us. But what else could we do? We can vote. We can register other voters. We can drive other people to the polls and we can resist. And uh, and I would like to point everyone who hasn't seen it already. It will make you cry. And that's OK. Um, to the Joan Baez song that's up at Rolling Stone. I also put it at the open thread this week at Crooks and Liars. Uh, the president sang Amazing Grace. Uh, it is about uh, the shootings uh, and when Barack Obama sang, the shootings in Charleston and at the church with the church ladies and uh, the church gentlemen and the people who were killed there. And it mentions them. Um, the, the video has beautiful uh, watercolor type paintings of them. It's an animated video. And uh, if you hear her sing, first of all, her voice will make you cry anyway, but uh, that's what Joan Baez's voice is for <laughs> uh, on this earth. Um, but uh, the president sang Amazing Grace. And then if you need some church this weekend, in addition to all the church that's going on, uh at my open thread at Crooks and Liars, there is uh, a video of Barack Obama singing Amazing Grace at the funeral. And uh, it is worth revisiting. That whole speech is worth revisiting if you have the time. Uh, but it is about grace. And I, we don't have time for a full Bible bitch this weekend, but uh, <laughs> it's appropriate. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, just one little sentence. We carry this precious message around in the unadorned clay pots of our ordinary lives. Yeah. Yes, we do. Okay. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Happy Easter, everybody. Would you like to take a breath and I'll run through a couple of news things, then we'll call it quits for the day? That'd be good. All right. You you uh you kick back, Blue Gal. <laughs> up. Yep. Um, because you know, this this whole thing has to be sound edited. <laughs> And while you do that, I'm going to go to the bar and just brag about <laughs> my beautiful wife. Um, you remember that big tax cut that was going to save the GOP? They were going to—they have we, had, we stole a Supreme Court seat and we cut everybody's taxes, and that's how we're going to win. Apparently, almost nobody actually has felt the effect of any of those tax cuts, except the richest people and corporations in America. Oh, and uh, by the way, Drift Class, uh, Donald Trump asked his Ohio audience why why did Barack Obama leave so many and co- many judgeships open. Yeah, God. it's like he wasn't even working. What's wrong with you know the Negroes are lazy. <laughs> Why? Why? The, yeah. And and uh, so many people on Twitter were like, you know, my brain fell out. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite was my brain fell out and landed on the ground in the shape of Merrick Garland. <laughs> yeah. What could this possibly mean? <laughs> um, and uh, same guy that Donald Trump fella apparently has been floating the idea of pardons for everybody. Pardon, you get a pardon, you get a pardon, everybody gets a pardon, uh, because, and a pardon is a thing of value, and if you offer a pardon to someone to stop talking about you uh, and, and confessing and implicating you, then that's a bribe. So uh, it just it just gets slimier and more complicated every week. Uh, this week, two different watchdog groups have filed a criminal complaint against um, a super PAC controlled by John Bolton, you know, the new head of the NSC. The uh, fact that he has super PACs, he has two uh, 501c3s, tax-exempt organizations to quote-unquote educate the public. Yeah. He has two and we have none. Yeah, and he's been... <laughs> and they've been am I stupid or am I just moral? I don't understand well, anymore. Well, if you were on, you know, if you were Pammy Atlas, uh, I wouldn't be married to you. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm I'd glad be, I'm married to you. I'd be podcasting <laughs> against you. But yeah, he's had two puke funnels out there for... for Trowling out yep. his incredibly warmongery, racist nonsense. Right. Direct years. mail, direct mail. And made a fortune off of it. And yep. apparently part of the problem is that those organizations might have violated a law that prohibits foreign countries. Yeah. Some tiptoeing in and fiddling with our elections. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, hey, I'm sure he'll be a great national security advisor. Uh, Scott Pruitt, uh, 
apparently uh, this Airbnb thing is pretty amazing. Because uh, if you're Scott Pruitt, you can get uh, a DC apartment owned by a lobbyist for just fifty bucks a night. Um, if you're Scott Pruitt, right? You only pay fifty bucks a night when you actually stay there. So unlike your home or hotel or anything else, um, when you when your lease is there and you, you pay for every day, whether or not you're out or visiting hookers or rolling back EPA regulations or turning the Amer- America or saying, you know what? We don't need smog emissions. We don't need emissions controls. Just take all your shitty cars and send them here because we love them. Um, you still have to pay every night. And 50 bucks a night for an apartment in Washington, D.C. is ridiculous. So, yes. again, there's there's no – it's like they're just stealing the ashtrays at this point. Yeah. There, yeah. There's no level of corruption so petty that they're like, well, fuck it. Well, I'll get a pardon. And if I don't, nobody's going to arrest me because, you know, sleepy over here. Uh, um, Paul Ryan ain't going to do shit. Mitch McConnell's not going to do shit. Um, the, the, are you kidding me? The, the, Jeff Sessions, Jeff Sessions, I own his ass. Yeah, I, I can get away with murder. It doesn't matter what I do. I'll, at one point, I'll have to resign, but who cares? I'll walk out of here with a bunch of loot on my back and bye bye. No one's gonna catch me. Uh, Michael Cohen, speaking of uh, thug lawyers, uh, apparently denied that Donald Trump knew anything about the hush money that were were paid to the porn star, and that kind of blows a hole in the whole defense. Of, yeah. Attorney client privilege, because if he had no idea what was going on, there's no privilege. Um, which is again, it's it's a hard story to follow, not because it's inherently complicated, but you but because you can't believe they're this incredibly stupid. They're this dumb. But they are. They they really just are this this ridiculous. The Housing and Urban Development Department, Ben Carson HUD, is trying to roll back the Obama era efforts to enforce fair housing laws. Yeah. If Obama did it, it must be evil. We must roll it back. And that's what our that's what our thirty percent love that. Whatever Obama touched, we're gonna undo it. Doesn't matter what it is. Um Rick Gates, you know, pal, pal of mine, pal of uh pal of Donald Trump, close personal friend, campaign guy, uh knowingly communicated with a former Russian intelligence officer during the two thousand sixteen presidential election. Again, in any other universe, that's the ball game. At that point, you start packing your bags because you're going to jail, but you'll certainly be impeached. But in this case, again, now that the entire Republican Congress has decided, you know what? Let's just let's just fuck the place over, burn it to the ground, steal what we can get and go home. Um, anything's possible. Yep. Um, at least 12 states are planning to sue the Trump administration for trying to uh, jam in a mention, a question about citizenship in the 2020 census. I wish them uh, the best of luck. Facebook shares fell almost 5% over this week. So, you know, what with a giant soulless corporation exploiting your data, who could have seen that coming, Blue Gal? I don't know. I, I used to teach technology. I appreciate our Facebook followers, and uh, if if you guys are at the point where you're going to dump Facebook, let me know. <laughs> we will get a podcast to you through some other means if if need be and we have yeah. lots of other means if lots you if you are deleting your facebook account i mean don't i'm we're not recommending recommending any lifestyle changes for our listeners but we would like to know how you're reacting to that and my okay let's do a mashup of my two favorite stories this week and then we'll call it quits okay carolyn sunshine that's her real name is she a porn star no she's not um, has been hired as the White House as a White House press aide. Her most notable previous experience was as Tinka Hesselheffer in Disney's Shake It Up, which is a 2010 story about Rob Porter beating his wife. No, it's not. Oh, no, it's not. No, no, no. I got a little <laughs> confused. It was a 2010 show about teen dancing, and now mm-hmm. she's qualified to be a White House press aide. Uh, Rob Porter is just someone that Donald Trump sits on the Truman balcony and looks out across the night sky and wishes, wishes that Rob Porter could come back because he doesn't have that many fellow uh, wife beaters to talk to. It's unbelievable that he is sitting there pining for why can't Rob Porter come back and be handsome next to me? Yeah. Okay. At some point, it really is a test. Yeah. Yeah. Much. and, And I'm not talking about right now. I'm talking about 100 years from now. Yeah. When people look back and look at Republicans, it's like, what sort of self-loathing monster would you have to be to be a Republican woman? You've forgiven this guy everything. Yep. And this guy's thinking about bringing the the guy who lost a job because he abused both of his wives back because he knows that Republican women won't raise a people. They won't. 
they will not uh, have any problem with that. No. Yep. And that is that is horrifying. That is horrifying. It is. It is. What has gone wrong in your life that you've ended up this way? Well, I think we know. I think we know. Uh, Drift Class, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty, are you kidding me? What? It's Easter weekend. And that can only mean what, Drift Class? The return of Bun Bun Stew. We got Bun Bun Stew. Bun Bun Stew. Bun Bun and his pal Ricky is along for the picture. They uh, are always making poop while their hay shines. Always. Um, just a reminder that while Bun Bun Stu and Ricky are very well cared for pets, uh, they have been a part of our uh, long-term listener and buddy Mike Kay's life for a couple of years now. Uh, bunnies don't generally make good Easter pets. Uh, Easter gifts for little children. Don't get your child a bunny. Get them a cat or a hamster. Don't get them a bunny. It's not a good pet. Uh, and get them a stuffed animal bunny if you want to celebrate Easter with a bunny. That's the best way to do the bunny thing. Uh, we, d- we do recommend against getting bunnies at Easter. It's not just not a good idea. You can send your Internet Kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. And we love seeing those $5 contributions come in. Uh, that tells us that you're listening and you care, and we appreciate it so much. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details, both our PayPal, postal information, uh, GoFundMe, which I'm now using to pay off some medical bills that I have. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, Patreon. All of it. It's all there at ProLeftPod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, look, the Internet Kitties would rather hunt for bunnies and chicks than for eggs, and they wish a happy Easter, a happy Passover, and a happy Spring to everybody. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.